Okay, thank, thank you. And this is a very fascinate, fascinating conference. And, and my presentation, it won't, I'm afraid it won't be very scientific. It's more about, more about some kind of personal explorations into, into large language models and, and what, I, what I can do with them. Um, I'm a senior lecturer in uh, team leadership and, and entrepreneurship, but my background is more in humanities, in, in education, literature, linguistics, uh, f philosophy and in information studies. So, um, yeah, AI, AI might take my job very soon and it might also uh, steal my identity, steal my money <laughs> and it, it, can, it can already steal my voice. I've been experimenting with that. Um, but still, I, I find it that, uh, that it's, a, it's a fascinating toy. And it, it's a toy for learning and thinking, and that's how I've been using it. And it's... Um, yeah, one of, one of my teachers says that, uh, that how mammals learn is, by, is mainly by playing and sleeping. And that, that play, in playing part, I think it works, at the moment it works nicely with AI and AI tools. Okay, so um, there's this saying that, uh, that if you can formulate a question well enough, the answer will, will reveal itself or become obvious. And that saying, it was, it was attributed to Ludwig Wittgenstein by ChatGPT. I was having a conversation with ChatGPT about this. And uh, then I asked it to provide me with an exact quote and, and tell me where it, where it can be found. And it told me that apologies, you, that cannot be found, it's not there. <laughs> so this is what I found, found by reading the actual book, Tractatus Logico Philosophicus. If a question can be framed at all, it is also possible to answer it. And ChatGPT is very willing to answer all my questions, whether they can be answered or whether they, can, whether they are good questions or bad questions. I get the answers anyway. And I found that uh, by asking bad questions, I usually get bad answers. But, but I can have a conversation with the ChatGPT and my answer my questions will become better, and the answers also will become more interesting. So it's, a, it's this uh, process of exploration that, that you can engage, with, engage in with the AI. Um, there is also this uh, very famous, like everybody's been bringing, bringing in this latest research. I'm bringing in this, like the, probably the oldest research. In, in Plato's Meno, a uh, very famous and also very old ancient Greek text about education and learning. Uh, there's this famous uh, paradox that we cannot look into something that we, we don't know. We don't know to look into it. And, and if we know something, we don't have the need to look into it. So, so if, if I already know what I'm asking, why would I ask? I know, I know it. And if I don't know what I'm asking, how would I ever be able to ask? Because I wouldn't know what to ask for. And from, from this, uh, Plato came to the conclusion that, uh, that there is something that, that all learning is remembering somehow. We, we somehow remember something that we have forgotten when, when we are learning and being questioned. The, the story in Meno, it was about uh, about Socrates, the famous character of, of Plato's, uh, trying to, or teaching a slave boy to do geometrics, like quite complex geometrics. And during the process, the slave boy, he realized that, that he already knew the geometrics. And it was, it was only uncovered by the questions asked by, the, uh, asked by Socrates. So there's this nice concept of anamnesis, the recalling of past, past things, recollection and reminiscence. So this idea that all learning is somehow remembering. But what, what do we remember and how does it work? Um, I'm, I'm not in favor of this idea of brain-based intelligence. I think actually that much of our intelligence is within our, within our language. It provides the world 
a world of concepts for us through which we explore the world and through which we understand things. So in, in my view, in language takes, takes quite a lot of the heavy lifting of our intelligence. Our brain, it plays a part and it's not an insignificant part, but language is, I would say, much more important. And I, I don't think these large language models, I don't think they are that intelligent. Uh, I, th I think they are about as intelligent as bees or swarms of bees. But the interesting thing about them is that this swarm of bees, it works with language, which is basically the basis of our intelligence. And they can work in, in language in, in, in many different languages. All the content of the internet until, until something like 2022 is it at the moment. So they have this huge base of human language to work with. And, and they can, they can uh, bring parts of it to us. I, th I think of large language models, and this is not a not a technical understanding. Somebody who knows something about technology here would be like, like uh, pointing out serious flaws in my thinking. But this is my practical understanding. I used to be very interested in, in fractals when I was a kid. And I used to go zooming into these fractals and get these all, all the fascinating new pictures infinitely out of it. And I think of large language models in the same way. But in a way that it's a fractal that I don't understand, I can zoom into different parts of it and bring those parts together, compare and combine them, ask them to be explained to me like for a, to a 12-year-old if I, if I don't understand what the answers that I'm getting. So I can get different perspectives in, in a couple of seconds to, into any parts of this huge language structure that I don't understand at all. What kind of uses have I had for this is, is basically asking about how to do my job. That's, that's one thing. I work as a team coach in Tamk Pro Academy, and all of our student essays for years, they have been put in the open internet. So they are there in, in this large language model, all of them, like, like probably at the moment 15,000 student essays <laughs> about our program. So basically it knows our program better than any of us coaches who work there. <laughs> so we can ask it for advice and it gives brilliant advice. I ask for things like, like what kind of things should I be focusing on, on as a first year student in, in our program? And it gave a better list than I would have ever been able to give. So it, so it does my parts of my job better already than I do. Um, I've been comparing philosophical theories that haven't been compared before because it wouldn't make any sense. But of course, it aims to please and gives me the answer. And I can use that as basis for my own thinking. Um, I can have conversations in Swedish language. Um, and I'm not fluent in Swedish, but I can train Swedish with it. Uh, I would never ever be confident enough to try my Swedish with a real person, especially the people that are interested in the topics that I'm interested in. But with ChatGPT, I can have these conversations. I can do translations. I can translate untranslatable Finnish sentences or Finnish sayings, like really old ones, into English. Um, first, it gives me a poor translation, but then I ask it a little bit to, the, that, to that direction, make, make it a little bit funnier. Uh, bring out some violence into it, <laughs> and, and then, then it'll give me a perfect translation in English. And it's, it's a better thesis supervisor than I am. I ask my, some of my students to, to ask questions about their thesis work from this chat GPT. I don't ask them to put it directly into their thesis, of course, but to have conversation and have, have ideas. I use it for uh, project application, project applications, like, uh, like when I've been working on something for hours, I become tired of it. And then there's another question that I'm like, oh, I have no answers for this. So, so then I put in all the work that I have done for the application and ask, what would you say from this perspective? And it gives me brilliant answers I'm like, yeah, of course. And then I, then I get back into writing and, and put it into my own words. 
Yeah, I think, oh, am I running out of time? Three minutes, yeah. Okay, so these kind of things I've been working, working on with, with the AI. Uh, I also, I've also been interested in this, this uh, uh, question of how do we increase the value of information? What's the path from least valuable to the most valuable? And we start with, with raw data, which doesn't make sense to anyone yet. Then we get to information, which has potential for knowledge. It has some potential to aid us in our practical tasks, for example. But it, it won't aid us in the practical tasks yet until it becomes knowledge. It becomes contextualized, it, it fits to a certain situation, it becomes practical to us in our struggles of, of our working life, for example. And then when we become more and more experienced in applying, applying knowledge and evaluating it in, in practice, we may at some someday get into wisdom. So I asked, asked the chat GPT that, that how does this process work and uh, what can AI tools do for us in this process? And it gave me really good answers in, in each of these stages. How can AI tools help? And then I start wondering that if, if practice has something to do with it. And it, it also gave me good answers of, of what, what kind of practice we need in each of these stages and how, how can AI help, help us in that practice. So ChatGPT cannot draw pictures, so I got around this limitation by asking it to, it to give me the answer in, in mermaid diagramming language. <laughs> which I then could in input into this, uh, this uh, diagram generator and it gave me something like this. I've been modifying it a little bit, but, but you can get also get these nice diagrams out of, out of ChatGPT. So, in, in my view, uh, education of the future, it's not so much about about having the correct answers to everything, because, because these large language models, they will, they will have better answers than we do. But what they don't have is the struggles that we have in our lives, as, as Nick, Caves, Nick Cave said in, in, had said in the earlier presentation. And, and our struggles, um, they make us ask questions. And in, in these conversations with the LLMs and also our friends and colleagues, we can come up with, uh, with better questions, hopefully. So now I'm running out of time and looking forward to your comments and questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. There's a little trick with the clock back there. It actually shows the time with the five minute questions. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but I, I mean, we don't, do we have any questions? Just one question. Okay, we have a question here. Go ahead. Hello. Um, I'm not sure if it works. Thank you for the presentation. Um, my question is, if you are uh, asking the questions today, when, is the, when will this moment arrive when the, when, we, when the AI is going to ask questions from us or the AI is, is uh, questioning another AI? Um, I, th I think there are tools like that already. There's this, uh, was it Auto GPT that asks questions from itself until it comes up with a really good answer. <laughs> so, so in in a way that works. But I like to bring in the human com human component to it, my my own personal struggles and <laughs> sufferings and stuff like that. Thank you very much. Okay, one last question, and then we're. Uh going to continue with our next presentation. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your interesting uh, presentation. Uh, since I have my background in, in philosophy and educational sciences, I will ask one question which is more related to that. Uh, Mino uh, takes the familiar question whether the virtue can be taught. So I will ask you a bit more rhetorical question. Whether artificial intelligence might taught the virtue? <sighs> I, re I really cannot answer the question. Um, Should we ask ChatGPT? 
<laughs> you should probably ask it, and it'll give you an answer. It, it may not be the correct answer, but an answer, nevertheless. But it's still nice to see you struggle, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah the, man, that's the whole point of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, an applause. Yeah, thank you.